massive hole. Hello lads. Well, welcome to the muddiest and most generically UK location I could find. Um, I found one in particular that was just all brown um, and muddy little puddles to fall into and to get my, you know, trousers dirty in. But welcome to the Ibiza Cupra and today's video is not a normal one. We're going to be talking about why this little hatchback is rarer than a Lamborghini Gallardo. So for all of you boys and girls out there from America who are coming to this video and going, what the hell is this? Why is it so small um, and weird looking? This is a Seat or Seat or Seat. It, no one calls it that. It is basically a Spanish manufacturer that copies Volkswagen. So Volkswagen is a globally renowned company that has a few under its wing. It has a few baby companies. Seat is one of them. And for a long while now, it's been under its wing using the same platform for its cars. So for example, the Seat Leon is a VW Golf. The Seat Ibiza is a VW Polo and so on and so forth. According to howmanyleft.co.uk, um, and yes, I do need my phone for this, there are 301 Ibiza Cupra T's left on the roads in the UK currently. And let's compare this to the standard Lamborghini Gallardo in which there are 341. This little gray hatchback is rarer than a Lamborghini Gallardo. This particular car is a 1.8 turbo Ibiza Cupra. Cupra standing, uh, I believe, is like a shortened version of Cup Racer. A 1.8 turbo, stock 180 horsepower, 240-ish newton meters of torque, uh, and you can map it to around about 210 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque. So this car is around about 2006 WRX Impreza torque from a little chassis like this. It weighs about 1200 kilograms, which is like 2,600 pounds, I believe. Let's look at what cars were sold alongside this back in the day in 2006 when this was sold. In 2006, uh, Seat, apparently, according to the Volkswagen report of the time, sold 186,000 Ibethas. So this style and shape of car. Out of which, how many do you think were Cupras? No, uh, the number of that was 81. So 81 Seat Ibiza Cupra Turbos in 2006 were handed over to customers. Um, and about 70 of which are still going. If we look at the cars Seat was selling, the Leon Cupra has been the most famous one and arguably it is a better car. Back in the day, this thing brand new was 16,000 pounds and the Leon Cupra was 19,000. For this, 180 horsepower for 16,000 pounds. It's a small car, it's not that big. The Leon is a bigger car, it's a two litre turbo. The thing generally was a much better setup and handling car. Guys, the Mark 1 and Mark 2 Cupras are kind of better looking cars as well. The Mark 1 Leon Cupra definitely looks nicer. So if at the time you had 16,000 pounds and you were looking for a car, arguably you could have got a very nice car back in the day for that sort of money. So why would you really buy this new? And if you were to spend a few thousand pounds extra and get a Leon Cupra, you could get a car which was much more tunable uh, and was bigger and had more street cred on it. So why would you buy this new? I think you'd have to be a little bit insane to do it or just you know, someone young with lots of money. And even then you'd finance, you'd go and finance a nice Audi or a nice Bimmer or something. Hmm. So, uh, let me just list off some of the hot hatches that came out when this was around at the time. Okay, so you had the EP3 Civic Type R, a fantastic hot hatch. Uh, you had the Focus and Fiesta STs, uh, the Megane RS, shout out Lee Lockwood, uh, the Mark V Golf GTI, Cooper S, Clio 182, or is it 197? 197. Um, we could get a used Clio 182 at the time for, you know, cheap. Talking of the Clio RS, the 197 and the 182, they are some of the best track cars and fast hot hatches you can buy. Uh, still today, really, they're the best setup uh, for the corners. And this thing would keep up in the straight, maybe be better with the higher torque figures, but in the corners, you're gonna be left for dust, unless you install things like a rear anti-roll bar and you sort the suspension out a bit more. I've given up, I've given up being outside, it's too cold. So I think one of the final blows on the coffin for the Ibiza Cupra at the time was that between 2006 and 2008, there was the global economic recession as well. So if you only had 15, 16,000 pounds, economy cars and economy size cars, the last thing you're gonna look at is a 1.8 turbo Cupra that has uh, 25 miles per gallon 
on a good day, if you're a bit, you know, heavy with your right foot, it's expensive to tax and insure. It just doesn't make sense for that same price range. And I mean, like I said, if you did have that money, you would just put the deposit down and finance something cooler. Anyway, or with the state of the uh, economy as it was, it just wouldn't make sense for you to buy unless you're insane. So thank you to the insane people who bought this car back in the day because you have, uh, I've ended up with a very cool, cheap car um, that I'm having a lot of fun with. So thank you, original nutcase. <laughs> so two and a half grand or less for a hot hatch that does 143 mile an hour tops, does 60 in seven seconds or under if it's mapped, and you can get over 200 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque if it is mapped. And for that, you have to do bugger all to it. Uh, I'd say for the money, that's stupidly impressive. And if you can bear the looks and everything like that, that are a bit Marmite, uh, and the fact that it is a small car and it is an Ibiza still, uh, then you get a hell of a lot for that money. The thing is with this car as well, because of the bad economy, the fact that the clutch is heavy, the steering's heavy, everything's a bit less of a city car, uh, and it's a bit more of a sort of performance oriented car. If you had someone who wasn't really into driving and they drove this, they'd probably think it's horrible. Uh, and the fact that you get awful fuel economy as well uh, and the fact that not necessarily the best looking car in the world it doesn't really make a good seller uh, especially when the economy is sort of dead it does want to oversteer quite a lot uh, so if you do pile it into a corner and lift the throttle off it will want to trail around on you which i think is really cool if you're a grandma or you're someone who doesn't enjoy driving not all grandmas um it could be a bit scary because it does just want to rotate which is cool because that means it's lively in the corners and it wants to play and move around. It also does mean it kind of wants to spin if you're not prepared for it. <laughs> so thank you a lot for watching. Uh, hope you all had an amazing new year and I've got a like huge list, huge list of videos lined up for this year uh, and some time and the, the, the capacity to do it mentally. So thank you for the support. Thank you for 25,000 subs. Thank you for everything. And I will see you in the next video. Make sure you drive safe and peace.